In this video, I'll show you how to build your own image zoom interaction. I had a client this week reach out to me and they were having problems with an older course that they were updating and republishing. And inside that course were a series of learning interactions that are built into Adobe Captivate 2019. These are specifically the learning interactions for image zoom. And of course, the assumption was that they would be compatible with HTML5. Let me show you. So when I go into the learning interactions and I select image zoom and insert this onto my slide, we go ahead and we select an image that we wish to use with this particular feature and add it to the slide here. The assumption would be that this would work with HTML5 because of course, if I click on the project dropdown menu and I select HTML5 tracker, it doesn't show that this is not compatible with HTML5. Even if I press uh, refresh a couple times, still nothing. So what happens is that when we preview this in HTML5, you'll see that it shows up. So at first glance, you might think that it's working, but as soon as you try to use the zoom feature, the image goes away. So clearly that's not going to work with uh, with my project here. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and show you the alternative that I suggested, and you can use this same alternative yourself. So I already have uh, all the stuff I need in my library here. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the library and bring in that image of the family here. I've already resized it to be roughly the size of this slide. But the first version of this is just going to be the thumbnail that learners will click on. So I'll just make a nice small version of it here. We'll go to the properties inspector and we'll select use as a button. We'll also go into the actions tab. I'm not going to set an action yet. I'll do that in a few moments, but I am going to select the hand cursor and disable the click sound. Just a couple of preferences that I prefer. Now I want to create the effect that there's an overlay over my entire slide and I'm going to do that with a shape. So I'm just going to grab a rectangle and I'm going to place it so that it covers at least all of my slide, if not maybe a little bit more. It's okay if it spills into your scrap area a little bit. I'm going to change the color to a dark gray and I'm going to set the opacity, uh, let's say, 60%, so the background will kind of show through. I'm gonna to go to the library again and grab that same image of the family and pop that in as well. I'm gonna open up my alignment toolbar to make it easy to align that image center. And I think I'm actually gonna resize it a little bit here so that it's not totally filling the screen. Now, of course, I'm using a picture of a family, but in actual fact, you might be showing an image of a piece of equipment in your workplace or perhaps a diagram that learners would need to look at and inspect maybe for a practice question that you're also going to put on this slide. And that's why this overlay is kind of a neat feature. Another image I have in this particular library is an exit button. So I'm going to drag that in from the library and we're going to place that just in the upper right hand corner. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to group all of these overlay pieces together. So this is the exit button. This is the picture of the family. I'm selecting them right from the timeline here. And of course, the background smart shape, which covers the slide here. And if I right click these, I can right click from here or from my slide itself. I'm going to group them together and we're going to give this group a name. We'll call this large image. Now for right now, I'm going to hide it on my timeline, but I'm also gonna hide it up here in the properties. By default, I don't want this to be visible. So we'll select not visible in output, and I'm also going to hide it on my timeline so I can continue to work with the image that's in the background there. So let's hide it. We'll select the smaller version of the image. We'll go into actions here 
and we'll change the on success action of clicking this image to show that grouped image, which I've called large image. I'm going to uncheck continue playing the project because I want learners to stay on this slide until they're ready to move forward. And let's turn on that large image again. Let's make it visible to ourselves. And we'll click the grouped object and then click the X icon. And now I want to select use as button and we'll go ahead and click on the actions tab and we'll set the on success action to hide our grouped object, which again is large image. And we'll also uncheck continue playing the project. And that's basically it. That's pretty much good to go. If you have learners returning to the slide, you may want to write an on enter advanced action right here that hides this pop up, if you will, by default. But I'll leave that up to you. Each situation is different. It's just a simple matter of writing an advanced action that every time you arrive on the slide, you hide this object. So let's preview this and see how it works. Okay, so here we go. Here's our slide with the Thumbnail, again, like I said, maybe you've got a custom knowledge check on the rest of the slide where you're asking a question. And if you want to get a close up view, you click this and you get the nice little overlay and you can inspect the image or, you know, if it's the workplace, maybe it's a diagram, an illustration or a photograph of a piece of equipment. And then they can just click the X icon to return to the slide. And of course, they can do this as many times as they need to, to zoom into that image. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.